Hello everyone. Welcome to Softree's webinar today on cross-section templates and template components. My name is Andy, your host for the webinar today, and we have with us today our house engineer Matt Dickey, uh, who will be presenting the webinar and demonstrating the software. Um, so, just oh, sorry about that. Um, just few housekeeping items before we um, get into the webinar. Um, you are muted, so uh, please ask questions and engage with us through the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar panel. Um, just uh, hope you can find it. Uh, and just for your information, this webinar is being recorded um, and will be available on our YouTube page um, with the recorded uh, video of the webinar. So all enrolled and registrants will receive an email linked to the recording after this webinar is over. And on to the next slide. Okay. So what are templates? Um, templates in RoadEng and their components are one of the building blocks of your road or corridor design. Uh, Cross-section templates will allow you to set and control parameters such as your uh, road width, your surfacing depth, um, shoulders, ditches, and cuphill slopes. Uh, templates interact with topography, super elevations, subsurfaces, and alignments to produce final design cross sections. It's important to understand that templates are not static. Uh, they're like many programs um, that act as collection of logic and rules, so they adapt to each cross section. Um, so this is the uh, agenda for today's webinar. Uh, so Matt will be presenting um, probably in the sequence from the top to the bottom. And without further ado, I will now pass on my screen over to Matt, and he will um, start presenting the webinar. All right. Can everyone uh, see what I'm looking at? I guess uh, someone wants to just add something in the chat. seeing anything, but I'm not getting any, uh, anyone saying otherwise, so let's uh, roll right along. So thanks for the introduction, Andy. Um, and uh, yeah, so as Andy said, the uh, templates are they're an important part of the software. Um, it's 3D software, uh, so they, uh, they are responsible to control what the cross-section of our road prism looks like. Uh, as Andy said, they're, they're live, so as we move one parameter, or one uh, like our horizontal alignment over cross section uh, moves as well, and the profile moves as well, and the way that behaves, the way the cross section behaves, is controlled in the templates. So, cut slopes, road width, ditch, etc. So let's jump into our template window. So this is the template editor window. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the file structure. So right now I've got my normal uh, template uh, shown. Uh, so it's got a few different templates in there. I've got the eLibrary components in there. Um, but if you're new to the software or if you ever want to uh, uh, just go back to square one, you probably have uh, three templates uh, showing up by default. So if you do have uh, since where you want to go back to the defaults, uh, you've got this file path here. So by default, it'll come up when you hit open to this local C program data software you wrote engine nine. Um, then click last install, and uh, let's go with the resource metric for this example. So we've got three templates. Uh, since I went with the resource option. Uh, the resource low volume road is set to default, so DF. Um, we've also got a rural road template in there, and we've got an urban template in there. If I had clicked on civil, uh, the only difference would have been that the uh, rural would be set as the default. All right, so um, we'll build up from this. Uh, let's add in the components as well. So this uh, e-library, this is where components are stored. Um, I'm going to grab all of these components and I'm going to 
is it okay? So let's come back to our default. A template is made up of a series of components. Uh, the components are made up of features and legs. I won't really go into that detail right uh, during this uh, webinar. But uh, each component is customizable. So I've got my resource left. That's being highlighted here in magenta. So that's from my center line to the edge here. And that's showing my surfacing layer. Uh, ditch. It's attached to the outside of that. And I've got my slope left. So these are specified left to right. Um, and they're customizable. So let's double click. So if I want to make an 8 meter road, I would have my road width set to 4 meters on either side. And I would go in here and do that the same on the right. Okay. Now if you had something where you customize a bunch of stuff on your left, you want a symmetrical road, um, you don't have to necessarily go through and click through uh, the same parameters on the other. You can delete one side and copy and paste as right. So that's a mirror image of that, which makes sense. Um, I'm going to use this as a segue to talk about the order things are uh, drawn though. So instead of pasting that um, there, I'm going to copy and paste it at the bottom. So that doesn't look right and that's a great way to describe what's going on. So the order these are drawn is important. Um, it's usually related to the order they're actually built uh, in the field. So this there's an error going with, on with our uh, sequencing. What's driving that is the attachment point for this uh, ditch right is looking for the outside of my uh, last uh, component on the right. Since the resource is set at the bottom, the ditch component has nothing to grab other than the center line. So, the way this should look is we will shift this up and voila. Uh, another thing worth noting is if I hover over here, it's showing my point codes. So I've got a RER, so road edge right. Uh, I could also, if I didn't want that to just go to the outside, if I wanted that to go to a specific point, um, I could change the uh, attachment point. So connection, like I said this is set to go to the outside of the subgrade. Uh, I could set that to go to the outside of road edge. That's going to look the same. Um, just for showing the way that behaves. See, that's attached to that point rather than the outside of subgrade. Whereas if we changed our road edge right back to our outside of subgrade, it's going to be up here. Um, that's, uh, of course, doesn't make sense. So let's move it back to where it should be. Excellent. Uh, so what do we want to talk about next? Uh, the shading is important. So I've shown a couple examples now that uh, highlight some issues. Um, so if I want to shade the way uh, our different layers look, so if I want to look at, okay, what's being calculated as subgrade cut, I'm just going to click in the polygon there, hit uh, hatch cut area for subgrade. Turn off hatch sub, uh, fill area for subgrade, turn it back on, and uh, hatch fill area for surfacing one. So that's all pretty important stuff. Um, 
because these uh, cut and fill vol or areas are what drives the volume calculations in the software. So if you're using the software for costing or you're trying to minimize your cut and fill in your mass haul, um, if you have an error in your templates, that's going to uh, affect a bunch of other things. Um, so when we want to check to make sure everything's behaving properly, I will uh, just grab a left click, drag my prism around to make sure things are doing what I want them to do. And yeah. uh, while we're in here, let's uh, make a new template uh, for an example later on. So when I'm editing my templates, I usually don't like to uh, drastically change the structure of my default. Um, if I start messing around and adding components in, I always like to add a uh, new template just for that case. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to change this to, uh, let's call it JB, so default with jersey. Okay, so I'm going to add a component in here, and it's going to uh, uh, build upon our connection that we already talked about. So I'm going to add a jersey barrier. I'm going to go into my uh, uh, walls and barriers uh, component file or uh, folder. So that came from the e library. Uh, I've got my jersey left. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to paste that in as new. I'm going to double click that and I'm not going to mess around with much in here except I want to talk about the uh, barrier centerline offset. So right now it's set to an offset from centerline of two meters and uh, another parameter that's worth talking about is this base width. So if I wanted to I could set it to the edge of our road by going we've got a four meter width I believe and uh, four meters minus 0 0.8 this attachment is going to be on the inside of this one uh, offset appropriate offset would be 3.2 now if I wanted to do it another way we could adjust the connection point and instead of connection center line I go to a point code and st1 is the surfacing layer one and I want an X offset of actually I won't do it in here let's just hit OK so that's coming down here that's highlighting an issue with uh, the way our volumes are being calculated too so right now I've got my subgrade uh, showing up my subgrade fill showing up and that's being hatched and we've got a void here so that would be an issue I want to address before I use this in my design. Um, I'm going to change the centerline offset. So right now that offset, since we changed the attachment point, isn't referencing centerline anymore. It's 3.2 meters beyond um, the attachment point. If I set that to negative 0.8, it's going to go the width of the barrier in, so my outside is going to be right on the edge. Excellent. Uh, so next, let's just copy, paste another one, and I'm just going to call this W D. So by default. So I'm going to use this a little later just to show the uh, taper feature. Out of that. I don't care about my jersey barrier in this one, um, but let's make it extra wide. So width, uh, let's go 12, 12 either side. Actually, before I change the other one, um, if for whatever reason you want something where you have a uh, road that's not symmetrical, um, just don't have to update the other side. Go back to 
12 on that side. So we've got a roadway that's 24 meters wide right now. Uh, right, and touch on bridges. Uh, so in the sign parameter display range, there's going to be a default uh, bridge template that comes up as an option regardless of whether it's in your list here. Um, if you wanted to use something that looked a little more uh, visually appealing, uh, you can put together a bridge template uh, using the bridges components. And the same as the others, they're broken down into left and right. So this bridge deck left, it's just a slab. Uh, we can turn on that so it shows the uh, it's tracking the volume inside that. If we're tracking concrete volumes or something like that, you could use that. That's hover over that, and that is uh, right click surfacing layer ten. All right. Um, yeah, and there's a few other options. Uh, big difference about the bridge templates is they are not including any uh, material calculations underneath the bridge, which makes sense. All right, and do, do, do. So I think right now we're pretty good for uh, actually looking at stuff in the template editor. I'm going to hit OK. So these uh, two options here are available to us, and we'll uh, go into assign parameters by range. Just one more thing before I uh, exit out of here. Uh, the resource left. Um, it's sorry the resource low volume and then the typical uh, slope component in there. Double click that. So it's got uh, cut slope and fill slopes set to auto. Um, that makes those dependent on the uh, material assigned to your uh, topography in that area. So that's assigned by uh, chainage and. Let's go into the assign parameters by range. If you did want to fix that in here, you could uh, set it to a fixed value rather than a variable. Okay. So let's look at assign by range. So we've got our templates tab, we've got our fill types tab, sub horizons, site prep, overrides, and pits. Um, we'll go through these uh, fairly quick, uh, starting with templates. So we've got uh, ones we've added, um, we've got the default ones, and we've got this TP, so taper template, and this bridge template. Let's add a bridge template in here to our design. So where's a reasonable spot to put a bridge. Let's place one here. I've got the uh, the shading function turned on in my uh, uh, plan view as well. So that's nice for uh, those of you who like to balance your mass hall. Quick glance, you don't really have to look through the other uh, windows too, too much to get a reasonable, uh, uh, reasonably balanced route. I'm going to turn that off though so everyone can see going on. And yeah, I've just got my cuts uh, shaded as green and my uh, cuts shaded as red, some fills shaded as green. Turn that off. And assign parameters by range. So I'm at station 330. I want to have a bridge from station 330 to station 350, 20 meter bridge. Hit OK. Hit OK. So that um, default bridge template, it's not showing anything in my cross section. So if, uh, it's just a gap in the road design. Uh, all the line work comes in tight with your uh, center line and there's no, uh, there's no material uh, gained or lost through that section. Um, let's go down here over a little bit. And 
say I want to add a landing at the end of the road. So I'm going to use that uh, template that we just made with the uh, uh, wide station 510. If I want that to go to the end, I'm going to put it dot dot. So 510 to the end. And let's go with the wide default. So this shows a very abrupt change from our uh, typical road width to our uh, 24 meter wide uh, road width. So more of a landing than anything else. Um, if I want to smooth that out, I can use the template, uh, the taper template to do that. So if I want to taper everything from 490 to the, the 510, to go taper 490 to 510 and we've tapered that out excellent so what else is there to touch on um, let's see do we have somewhere in our alignment where Barrier makes sense? Sure, right at the stair, or towards the stair. So if we wanted to add a barrier to our road, I would assign the uh, barrier template that we created, uh, 70 to 20, and JB Jersey Barrier, okay, add that. So we've got a Jersey barrier showing up there now. Um, but it's not showing up in any of my other views, uh, which might be completely adequate for you. But you might also want to see that. So I'm going to go back to my templates. I'm going to just hover over an edge. So BR4L is the point code there, BR4L. If I want to show that in my plan view, I click template codes and let's add BR4L. We're going to show it as a purple line. And now we can see where our barrier is in the plan view. We can do a, same, a similar function in the uh, profile view as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, so let's go back into this assigned by range. Um, and let's talk about, so fill types, we can assign our fill types. Uh, so where I mentioned uh, we had our default set to auto for cut and fills. You can uh, assign different uh, sub horizons or fill material by road station. I'll do it in the uh, uh, sub horizons for now. So let's just say I've got uh, a couple meters of hard pan over solid rock. Uh, hit OK. Add. Okay, so that's from our start station to station 70. And that's showing we've got a, a one cut slope angle for the uh, portion of the solid rock, and then we've got uh, another cut slope angle for the portion in hard pan. Um, if I want to look at what those are, uh, my cut slope in uh, hard pan is one to one, and solid rock it's 100%. Uh, uh, you can add uh, additional ground types in here just by adding new and calling it whatever you want and assigning, setting up your uh, uh, 
geotechnical parameters to suit. All right, so other features, and this is signed by range. Site prep, uh, we can set a clearing width. So let's do 30 meter right away clearing, and then if our cut slopes extend outside of the 30 meters, uh, go an additional five meters out from that. Uh, and then we'll assign a stripping depth of 0.3 meters. So the stripping depth would be um, if you had your grand equipped rich layer that you wanted to get rid of. Okay. Okay. Oh, and I set the this template code rather than uh, slope stick base. Use there momentarily. And I don't think I hit add edit. I did not. So template code, uh, I want slope stick base, slope stick base, and I forgot to hit this last time, so that updates. Hit OK. So this is showing uh, before my road prism is constructed, we're removing 0.3 meter of material, and that material is assumed to not be suitable for construction, and it is not included in the mass all. Last uh, sign parameters by range that I'm going to get into today is instead of doing uh, this widening template, uh, we can handle that another way. So we'll go with an example. Uh, let's say I want to add a pullout at um, uh, station 400. So I'm looking for the uh, parameter I want to override. Uh, surface fill slope, surface thickness, width left. Okay. So I'm going to add. So at the default, I want uh, this to be the or at the start of my widening, I want it to be the default. So station will be 400. Um, add another one. So at uh, 410, I want it to be, uh, so we got an 8. Let's go to 12 meter width. And then at 430, go 12 meter width, and then at uh, 440, uh, we go back to the default. So there, we've added a pullout without adjusting our templates. Um, a nice feature of this is if you wanted to add that same uh, configuration somewhere else, just highlight it, hit duplicate, and you can assign it to be at uh, station, oh, let's go 200. Uh, and that, So the start station for this will be at 200, and it'll run to uh, 240. Hit OK, hit OK. And, of course, put it right in the corner, but it uh, shows, the, uh, shows the concept. Um, yeah, I don't think there's too much else. I'll uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, everyone, for coming in, and we'll see you all next time. Happy Halloween! <laughs>